So uh, with that, I think we can probably get rolling. Um, so uh, at this point, I can no longer see the participants list. So if new people pop up, um, someone will have to put them on the list. So our last agenda uh, is up. It looks pretty good. Um, I forgot to check to see if it made it to the blog yet. I know there was some weirdness with the recording. Uh, Tomas, do you know if it made it up? The, the recording is up. The blog, uh, I'm not sure, but I will add the link if it is. You can okay. continue. All right. Uh, we're temporarily putting our uh, measurements and uh, metrics and guidelines on hold till we have some plans for how to actually answer some of the XYZ questions. Because I, I'm proud of our work on that doc, and I think that it's a good doc, and I think it will continue to be a good doc. But uh, at this point, we're sort of circling around for how much is X, and that's going to require some actual answers on what X's we can actually get before we try and figure out which ones we want to count. So we've got a handful of issues that are up. I'm just going to pop them all. So uh, conveniently, uh, Josh updated uh, 80 and 3, uh, I think, about two hours ago. So yay, Josh. Thank you. Well, I mean, I wish I, wish I could say, yay, we actually have solutions, but we don't. Although 3 is going to have more info coming at the end of the month. Like, that's actually making really good progress. Um, the other one for WSL, not so much. Yeah, I will well, I'll take, I'll take one win. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm pulling hard for WSL because I weirdly end up touching Windows machines these days, and it would be nice if my platform of choice was available. But such is life. Well, so as soon as we can, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, so I believe there was some forward motion on the uh, secure boot information where the tokens arrived and stuff. Is that right, Brian? Yeah, there's some uh, there's some governance things that uh, I'm bringing to the board. Uh, that's the, the technical issues. We're not necessarily blocked on those. On the stream side, we're still looking to get a uh, one more shim review through the process before we start uh, dealing with the separate routes of trust for the SIGs and all that stuff. Uh, I'm doing that in parallel to the uh, the governance issues. That'll be before the board pretty soon. Okay. Awesome. Well, I know it, it's been a long road, but it's exciting that we're continuing to go down said road. So um, I and I know that uh, you had some shakeup at the bootloader team, which definitely made that more adventurous than it was going to be. So I, I appreciate you sticking it out. And uh, then we're off to the IRC channel stuff, which I will confess I don't understand at all, but um, it looks like Sean is our assigned uh, delegate for that one. Uh, Sean, how, how's it going? I honestly have no idea. I um, um, Brian kind of looped me into this, um, I guess a few weeks ago, um, and I was kind of, um, my my headspace was on Flock and the CentOS Connect, and so I haven't really um, dug into it. My understanding is the room were bridged. It worked for a while, and now we disable the bridge for another reason, and we uh, need to wait for the bridge to be enabled again. I think this is the current state. I you don't think it was us disabling the bridge. I think the bridge was disabled. Yeah, globally by either Matrix or Libera, I lost track. Yeah, yeah, it's a global what? thing. It's not related yeah. to us, but it's just that we can't test because basically I saw the channel for a while, and after they disappear again as soon as they disable the bridge. So yeah, I think we need to wait for uh, the bridge to be back uh, to continue testing. But uh, it looks like at least I could see new channels uh, popping up on on the instance. And it looks like oh. they've got uh, notes in there. Well, at least for setting up the matrix rooms and making them all ready, that can be done basically whenever. And then the final step of actually linking the channels um, can be done once the bridge is back online, if it is, or if we have to wind up 
asking EMS to deploy a personal instance of the bridge software on Fedora's matrix home server, which is also an option. That's what I was about to say. It might make sense to explore that option if this keeps going, because it's already pretty disruptive. I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just yeah. I'll just put it out there. I'm not a happy camper yeah. right now. Is anybody in this um, in this group using like actually using IRC, or are you connecting with Matrix to these rooms? Uh, I connect with IRC to those rooms, and then I never check my IRC client. <laughs> yeah, I have both as well, but I'm still using IRC because I have other like communities okay. over there. Yeah, for a while I was using uh, like an IRC client uh, running in the background and I would forget to ever check it. And then I realized after a month, people tried to PM me there. So I stopped using it because I didn't want to like ghost people. So were you connected on both Matrix I was connected IRC, on both, like, yeah. So now yes, I'm, okay. I'm basically only using Matrix unless I have to talk somewhere on IRC because I couldn't find a way to make it not, not have PMs at all and only be there to log channels. Right. I'd be interested in data on how many people are actively preferring IRC over over the matrix rooms. I would suspect that the that at least uh, anybody who is both Fedora and CentOS is probably matrix first. Mm -hmm. And folks that are purely CentOS or legacy CentOS folks are probably IRC first at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but the number of legacy CentOS people, um, to put it bluntly, is uh, dwindling. Yes. And uh, the the blend of people that come from the Fedora side interacting in, in CentOS is, is rising, which I think is intentional and good. But it also means that this, this breakdown is extremely annoying. On the plus side, it sounds like people who know what's going on know what's going on, and we have a few of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the case either. Hmm. I genuinely don't know what's going on at this point, because like when we were all flying back from Flock, that's when I find out that everything's just being torched because the bridge is being disabled and... Uh, prematurely and we just I don't know we don't we don't know anything okay I still would like okay. for this to be processed in the sense of like let's get our tricks rooms and get things up but at least one of the outcomes that seems to be going on on the fedora side is that people are now talking about getting uh, a matrix native bot to replace the IRC zode bot so um, there's a Fedora infrastructure ticket about it. I will uh, pass it into the chat in a moment. Cool. Yeah. Um, it sounds like there is not a lot for the boards to do on this, but that we have people who care. And so how can we help them? I. Uh, let me put it this way. Neil, you care. How can we help? Uh, well, um, at this point, uh, I would probably say we board level be great if you talk to the Fedora people who maintain the uh, EMS agreement to see if there's anything we can do to expedite, fix something about this. Because right now we have no answers about anything and we don't really know what our options are. Okay. Uh, Sean, is that a thing that you can do? Yes. Okay. Uh, I Neil, you mentioned the mm, the meeting bots. Uh, right now, we use different bots for CentOS because CentOS meetings still use SendBot, and Fedora meetings use the thing the Zodbot stuff. If Fedora is switching to Matrix native um, bots for these, would it make sense to also conversely try to switch the CentOS stuff to that? Yes, I think it would make sense for us to to use that as an opportunity to to deploy that bot as an instance for CentOS as well, um, or reuse the same instance 
across all the channels. Uh, I actually don't know the history of why we have SentBot and SentGuard um, versus reusing ZodeBot, which also exists and can live in basically any IRC channel. So um, I, there's not I, I don't actually know, but I suspect they might have evolved independently. That's that's entirely possible. And, and I, I don't know who the owners are for the IRC bots in the first place. So that's a, you know, that's that's one of those open questions where I have no idea. Okay. So I think we've got next steps at least. Okay. And then uh, moving on to our guidelines for uh, Quay Key. One of these days I'll figure out how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, our last update was two months ago when I assigned this to Josh, apparently, and I didn't say why. <laughs> and I probably forgot about it. Gosh, I hope Josh signed up and I didn't just hand you a ticket and be like, be done with you. Um, no, this feels like something I would have signed up for. Um, okay. I will, look, I'm going to actually write down an action item for myself to go get the status and update the ticket. Okay. That's... It makes me nervous when I see I did a thing that I didn't even note because like bad on me. Um, but if I did a thing, I should at least write down why I did it. Uh, okay. So that brings us through to our tickets. Uh, we don't have any uh, pending closed ones or any uh, any new ones uh, that popped up or any that are in hold that we haven't talked about, which I think brings us down to our community architect. So, uh, Sean, how was Lock CentOS Connect Ireland Atlantic travel? Wow, this meeting's moving very fast. Um, I think Flock ran uh, very well. It was less attended than previous, like pre-pandemic years. Um, you know, we would have liked higher numbers, but we still had over 100 people to flock in general, uh, which we were happy with. Um, we'd like to, you know, in the future, get it back up to the 200 or so level. Um, so we we located, we, we, we did a CentOS Connect at the flock, um, mostly because DevConf US got canceled, and that was our, our host event for our, our, our other one. Um, and I do intend to go back and, and do um, uh, the, the FOSDEM one um, as we did earlier this year. Um, I'll probably talk about that next month on, on some of the planning around that. Um, so we did that and what we ended up doing was we basically did it as an embedded track on the first day uh, rather than a separate day event. Um, I think on the whole, it was a really good thing to have CentOS like at the Fedora event. You know, we're, we're very close projects with a large overlap of of contributors, um, and that went well. Um, the The downside of doing it embedded in, um, in kind of embedded as a, as a single track is that we were competing with Fedora for space um, or for for Mindshare, I guess. Um, we were we were pretty well attended. I mean, nothing like the the full room that we had at Fosdem, but pretty well attended relative to the flock attendance uh, for most of the day except towards the end of the day, two of our talks had like like four people in the room and I was one of them. Um, and because those two talks were opposite the um, Asahi Linux thing, which oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming all of Flock was at, is that right? It was pretty full. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it so. was it's probably the fullest, uh, the most, at least for the sessions that I was in or participating or whatever, I think it was the most packed one I've ever seen Tivoli outside of Matt's keynote. Yeah. So, you know, that's the danger. Um, that's the downside, really, of, of kind of an embedded track. Uh, if we'd have done a separate day thing, then, um, you know, maybe we wouldn't have picked up everybody and there would have been people who wouldn't have come by, uh, come in an extra day early. And I'd have had to go in an extra day early to, to do some setup and stuff. So... Anyway, it was, it, it went well, there was a lot to learn. Um, I'm gonna write a, a trip report as I do. Um, uh, a lot of conversations with people. Um, 
Um, I'm trying to remember everything from the conversations. Uh, I had a lot of conversations with Neil actually while we waited for an hour and a half for them to bring us dinner. Um, that was that disappointing. Was that, was, that was really <laughs> bad. <laughs> they lost their order. Um, the uh, our our a a big thing came out of it was the the contributor documentation is um, you know incomplete as as I think we all know. Um, and I'm going to be taking a look at that now, now that flock is over. Um, and I'll be leaning heavily on, you know, people who contribute and can answer the technical details because I'm not the subject matter expert on, on that. But, um, and Amy and I had a talk about the, um, the SIG. There's, there's a bunch of outstanding issues for like uh, basically the health of each of our individual SIGs. Um, and so I'm going to, I think we can do it asynchronously and I will basically just go through each of those and kind of give a ping to the board. Um, some of them are just really obvious, like, you know, hyperscale is obviously active and healthy. So, um, you know, I'm sure we can just close that. Um, we'll get our report else? done. <laughs> yeah, I, you always do. Like, it's like the most read, uh, things on our blog so um oh uh in blog social media stuff i'm i'm gonna start we had also conversations about um efforts of the promo sig which is you know mostly me and and to some extent amy and uh we have interest from um the guy who does a lot of the uh fedora marketing stuff that he wants to help out and so i'm gonna get some regular meetings going um, and I'm looking into how we can actually share our social media accounts. I've been using Buffer for our social media, um, but I'm just on like the free thing, which doesn't allow me to have like team access. So I'm going to see if I can get some um, budget for that to do like a, a, a team access thing so that like, you know, our our X account, God, that's stupid to say our Twitter X account or our Facebook account doesn't like sit there and be inactive when stuff is happening, but I'm on vacation or something. So um, I think that's everything. Unless there's any questions about how specifically anything about Flock and CentOS Connect. I'm gonna ask a question that I asked a few people uh, in Ireland. If there was enough content uh, for the FOSDEM one um, to, to support more than the one day, would you prefer a two-day event or a two-track event? My general preference is for longer events so I never have to pick which thing I go to mm -hmm. because I always feel bad missing things and to a Note on your uh, small room attendance, uh, forever burned into my mind is a con when I was uh, presenting at Flourish in, I think, 2014, and they scheduled me in a room that seats 100 and zero people showed up. Oh, that and is. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like to set up competing talks because then somebody ends up in that position. Yeah. And that was yeah, I the worst presentation I've ever given in my life. I would also lean towards doing two days if we, if we can, uh, and if we have enough material and everything, because um, it also has the added benefit that it's more time for people to like hang out, have hallway track conversations, and all of that. Yeah, I personally wound up being super compressed during the days that we had this event, and uh, I didn't get a lot of time to hang out with people in the hallway track because. The first day, I only had 30 minutes where I wasn't speaking in a presentation. The second day was, um, you know, lots of other things going on. And the third day was just hack fast the whole time. And so there was not exactly room or time or planning or whatever for either rest or just hanging out with people. Like I got to see a lot less than I thought I would um, because of how compressed the event was. You were speaking in after sessions, Neil. That also played a part there. Well, I also didn't expect them to all be scheduled on one day in the in 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 a row. Fair enough.
Um, actually, the Hackfest thing is something we may want to think about for Santos as well. So when we did the Connect this year, um, Hyperscale did the meetup on the day prior, uh, mm-hmm. and we had that docs thing. Uh, um, the day after Fosdem, yeah. Yeah, it might be interesting to see, like, maybe we can formalize that as a thing. If there's if there's interest, obviously, but I don't know. Um, yeah. If we plan it in advance, yes, it will be nice. Uh, so I can plan a trip to stay a bit longer, and yeah, yeah. Did you need the whole day for the hyperscale meetup? Um, we have been spending the whole day at Fosdom for it. We we did, but we mostly got work done in the morning i would say i feel like in the afternoon we got some work done but it was it was a while ago but from what i remember the afternoon was mostly social like chit chat with occasional work sprinkled in here and there in the morning we got way more done uh, we also had a late lunch and a long lunch for what i recall that probably played a part there um yeah the the oncoming food comas slowed things yeah down. uh i i would say we could probably get by with a half a day. Um, we could also probably fill up a day of work if we planned it a bit better. Uh, yeah, we, we need to figure it out. I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, if we did go to a second day for uh, talks, if we went to a model of like a day and a half, so all day Friday, but like Thursday afternoon, and then we could have Thursday morning open for people to do half day meetups. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, that could work. I don't know if it would be too exhausting. That but... sounds pretty clever. Could try that, it. That could work. Uh, the only concern I have there is that people might want to attend like competing meetups, yeah. hackfests, whatever. Yeah. Um, like if we did a docs thing, I would like to be there, but I would also need to be in the hyperscale one, and that would be sad. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but like SIG, if you specifically SIG stuff, uh, that could work because uh, I feel like there aren't. No, I guess there's some overlap between hyperscale and alt images, but like overall, there isn't so much overlap. So potentially parallel tracks could make sense. All right. I have nothing else. Okay. And I don't think we've got any pending SIG reports. Um, Hyperscale is due for one that I honestly completely forgot about. Uh, We should write that. Yeah, I I think that's going to be something we'll do probably this weekend, Davida. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, We'll see how my jet lag goes. Yeah, Did I, was that, that one of the ones that I sent? I I sent the reminders like before I. Oh, you uh, you absolutely did, but I okay. yeah, write the reminder yeah. before flock and then yeah. flock happened. It occurred to me that like I was like going to be out of town, like right as I normally would do it. So then I I sent them and then haven't looked yep. at them. So I think that the Kmod sig is also up, but Peter George does all of the work, and I mostly just stand around and cheer hooray. Um, Well, then you can do some public cheering. That'd be great. Right. <laughs> I think that brings us to any other business. Uh, a couple of people brought up the changes in the Zoom policy where they're going to start using us to train their AIs. And that has a number of privacy and adjacent free software type concerns. And I know. Uh, Davida and Sean tried to look at what our, some of our options would be if it wasn't Zoom. We played with a Google Meet earlier today. Um, the um, the host controls are okay, but it, it's very tied to like who sets it up. Whereas with Zoom, we have like this team access. Um, so I, I I didn't see any way with the Google to. Like I can make it, and then after the fact, I can make any of you 
like give you admin on it, but it's it's still very tied to me or whoever it is creates the meeting, um, at least as far as I could figure out Google. I'm that not entirely confident that Google's not training AI or selling our, you know, data or whatever either. So, um, yeah, the other thing I've noticed with Google was the moderator controls were a bit plunky and it, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't entirely clear if you could do actions on the individual speakers versus on the group as a whole. Um, like you could, you could kill the microphone for everyone, but it wasn't entirely clear if you could kill the microphone for one person and all of that. Um, yeah, uh, Benny always. mentions in chat uh, GC at Alma Linux. Uh, so, do you know if GC has moderator controls at all? Because all the instances kind... I use don't. So, it kind of does. They don't work very well. Mm -hmm. um, so, OpenSUSE uses Jitsi. Um, we have fairly large Jitsi instances in place, and the moderator controls are exposed. The And they are a thing you could do. The tricky problem is that. Um, Moderator power is basically granted to the first person who enters the room, no matter what. So uh, it's a dice roll on, on who's actually going to be the first super mod. And then they have to be generous enough to give it to the rest of the people. Um, you you can just have a service your... user always keep the meeting open and then... Yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of weird ways to handle this, but they, they, they kind of suck. The biggest problem, though, is how Jitsi does recording. It does recording by running a headless Chromium instance in the background, running the website, and capturing it. Uh, so, does it, does it work? Um, to a point, because it's basically working by running the call as another user inside of the server that's running it, um, it's a lot of additional load to do the recording. And that load scales up proportionally to the number of participants. Um, and so you can knock out a server by just having enough people that that it is, you know, handling a whole bunch of video and audio streams and then trying to make a recording in real time. And sometimes the output is not great. You have to have a pretty beefy machine. And the one that OpenSUSE has is a retired OBS builder. So it's OP as hell. And that's why it works at all. Next. Uh, um, Red Hat is not trying to force this meeting onto Google Meet, nor is it saying that that is the only option, nor that this co uh, community is required to use a Red Hat branded option. I want to be extraordinarily clear about that. I'm mostly speaking because I happened to build the meeting that you all were in. Um, and so I wanted to share that it does in fact appear that if we have a recurring series, the moderators should carry forward automatically. The ability to nominate external moderators using a Google Valid ID, I'm assuming the one that I chose for you was Google Valid, uh, Davida, uh, is working, or at least somehow it figured out you were you. Um, and my understanding is that the moderator controls have gotten better that you can kick individual speakers out and you can mute individual speakers. Uh, Oh, Mostly because I've I accidentally kicked people out and muted them in meetings that I own by total accident. Like I didn't mean to kick the speaker out, but I, I clicked the wrong button. Um, and so uh, that does happen. Um, the, the biggest complaint that I have run into personally with Google Meet is that the placement of raise hand and leave the call is conveniently too close. And so many a person gets excited to talk and instead exits the call. Um, the thing that I don't know is, were there to ever be a serious problem, how hard is it to keep a bad actor from continuously rejoining? Um, I suspect any moderator could go and turn on the you must approve admissions, which I had turned off for the test meeting, which is why you were able to join immediately without any Red Hat person present. Um, but I'm, I'm open to, in my personal capacity, helping to explore this because I like solved problems, not because this is the best solution and this could easily be a stopgap, but I do want to kind of reiterate Red Hat is not trying to force Google meet. Red Hat is not trying to force the use of a Red Hat communication vehicle. No, that's so, fair, Bex. And it, it, I was actually going to suggest that, um, uh, you know, we could look at what it would look like with Google Meet stuff since they keep aggressively updating things. 
I would have also suggested blue jeans, except for today I learned that blue jeans is shutting down. Uh, so that sort of doesn't help. Oh my, that was going to be my suggestion. Blue jeans entirely is shutting down or Red Hat? Yeah, is Verizon shutting is shutting down the whole blue jeans business. Oh, Verizon owns blue jeans now? Yeah, they bought Verizon. They bought blue jeans at the beginning of the pandemic and they have decided to shut it all down. Oh, wow. the, the article that I saw was that they were shutting down free plans. It was not, the one that I saw did not indicate what was happening to paid plans. I suspect that Sean could easily get in contact because Red Hat does consume blue jeans for some of its work, that Sean could get an official, like, what did we find out as a customer answer? Um, but the, the primary consumption of blue jeans inside of Red Hat is not appropriate for this meeting because it does not allow um, guests to communicate. Yeah, that's a broadcast media. For, right. We used to use it as our meeting tool, but all of that has switched over to meet, and we only use blue jeans for like company wide broadcast now. So, uh, Bax, for what is worth, I'm pretty sure when I joined the meeting, I didn't have host privileges, and I'm pretty sure it was because you invited my work Google account and I used my normal Google account to join. Ah. Sorry, and that, I, that, no, I no, that, that the dresses completely, out of the calendar invite moved along. That completely <laughs> makes sense. I just realized as you were saying that you, you invited me and it, it showed up and that, that's absolutely what happened there. Okay, that makes way more sense now. Um, I'm happy um, to either walk through this with Sean because I would actually prefer that he be the owner of the meeting um, for completely selfish reasons, but I will pretend that Red Hat decided that Sean must own it. Um, but I'm super happy to like continue to troubleshoot this because I can understand the concerns that the project has around Zoom. And I'd like to ensure that Red Hat's doing everything it can to provide a stopgap while greater solutions are looked for. Yeah, yeah and we no, use and that's, Zoom. In, that's great. We, and we Sorry, use go ahead, Zoom for the hyperscale hangout stuff. So if this is going to be one of those things that we need to reevaluate, it'd be good to figure out like, based on our experience, figuring out the board meeting, whether you know I should make a change for the hyperscale hangout since I currently own that meeting as it is. The hyperscale hangout is easier, like SIG hangouts in general are easier because um, we could potentially put those on T3 or some other, sure. some other platform and it would probably be fine. Um, oh, and for, for the record, the other open source solution I'm aware of that would probably work is BBB, Big Blue Button. The yep. problem with Big Blue Button is that it is a sizable amount of work to deploy and like to carry and feeding for that is would probably be like somebody's full time job to do that. So it's not really something we can do as like an afternoon project for one of us. And I don't think it would be something that would be like good time for infra to spend on unless there's like a Fedora decides that's something they would really like to have as well. Fedora KDE uses KDE's big blue button instance for its meetings. So I mean, and as a KDE V member, I can actually create big blue button meetings if I so choose. So if that's an avenue we want to pursue, we can also try that. I can ask the KDE folks if they're okay with us using it, and we can actually do that. Um, I have decent experience uh, with uh, using Big Blue Button, uh, and I wouldn't have a problem with, with doing that if that's the way we want to go. That's good to know. Should, should we, uh, it, it seems like there might be uh, maybe Two things here. One is um, an investigation of longer term options, which we seem to have several. And the other is, uh, well, hopefully, maybe I'm being hopeful, um, what can we do for the next meeting? Because I, I think I'd like to not use Zoom anymore. <laughs> if I, can help it. I have no compelling reason to use Zoom other than it was for the longest time the only thing that worked with Wayland screen sharing. Same. And it's, I, I'm certainly open to the idea of uh, testing the uh, KDE instance of Big Blue Button, but I, I wouldn't want to sort of parasite off of them. Um, they're, they're a wonderful community full of great people. And if we're going to take something from them, we have to give something back. And I don't know what we would be offering. We'll cross that. We can cross that bridge when we get there. If if it if that turns out to be something we want to consider, there are, there are options on that front as well. Um, 
I, I, I don't want to presume anything just yet, but like we should try things and see what we like and, and kind of go from there because right now we, we kind of don't have anything. <laughs> and being on a uh, privacy respecting platform for our meetings would be nice. Yes, yes it would. And one that doesn't hate Firefox. Oh God, that would be wonderful. Yes, I, uh, I, I use a non-Firefox browser only when absolutely required and with great grumbling. Um, and that might just be me being grumpy and unwilling to adapt to change, but the whole point of independent web standards was to have independent web standards. Really? I also I don't think that's being man, grumpy. But... I, if that means being grumpy, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> but I have um, a lot of us so old school open source use. guys feel a little grumpy lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the, the up and coming people I know in the open source community are like, oh, just use Brave. It's great. It's like, yeah, but it's still chromium under the hood. And I want And the ad replacement thing with cryptocurrencies just makes me feel icky inside. Yeah. So I just, I suspect that I'm not as well connected to that universe as I used to be. I think that's okay. Yeah, it is the nature of getting old. I will uh, grudgingly use whatever tool um, you all need me to use, as long as it doesn't involve using a non-Linux computer, because I don't have one of those. Well, good news. Nobody's suggesting Microsoft Teams. Well, you weren't in our meeting. And I mean, not, not, not to wave a terrifying flag, but the team client for Linux actually works pretty well. Um, that's disturbing. I haven't actually used it. I have no idea. It works pretty uh, well. It, it works about as well as Slack, if I'm honest. That's oh, yes. Yeah, Slack thing. also have meetings if you want another terrible alternative. Oh, God, no. Please don't do this. Uh, if no, we're going to do that, we might as well... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to do this, we might as well throw in the other weird ri into the ringer, AWS Chime. That's an option. Sure. Um, it, yeah, shut up. Should we have Did, a table um, about this where, somewhere we can collect all the options and maybe some of the requirements and pluses and minuses for each? That's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's Let's good do that. Idea. Probably a good idea, yes. Um, didn't Fedora do something over Matrix for their Creative Summit or something? Yeah. Like, was so... that... Actual video over Matrix? I don't understand Matrix, honestly. I don't know how... What that it was is. JITS. So, so our EMS contract with Infedora includes an embedded Jitsi instance. And so, so they use that Jitsi instance to then screencast to PeerTube, which then they, re they uh, recast it to YouTube. So they were doing everything from Jitsi and, and PeerTube. I see. So Matrix was just kind of a... Blue. Yes. It was just how you got to Jitsi. Yeah. Right so okay. the way that it worked was that you could add a Jitsi widget and all the Jitsi participants were authenticated through Matrix. I get it. Okay. And that sort of thing. So uh, who's going to be in charge of making and owning this ticket? Uh, I can make it. I don't know if I want to own it. But... <laughs> Oh, Mike, if you can make it. Um... I mean, I'll make it if, if, if nobody wants to own it. Well, uh, tickets without owners tend to sit there and go nowhere. Uh, well, I mean, the extent of my being able to own it is that I can poke at things, give you lists, and then try to convince you to do something. That, that's about the best I can do. I'll own it. Oh. Okay. Sean, congratulations, you own it. Yay. All right. I think that uh, brings us to our uh, next iteration of any other business. Does anyone else have anything? Uh, 
I don't think I've heard anything from Celeste or Jeffro this meeting, so I just want to make sure that if your mics do work and you were just satisfied with the conversation or if your audio is broken. I'm here. You guys got okay. it covered. Okay. Just completely. If your audio was broken, I wanted to make sure. All right. Then um, I guess that you can have your 15 minutes back. So everyone have a wonderful remainder of August. And we will circle back around when it is time for another meeting. Bye, everyone. Excellent. Thanks for running. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Thank you all.